What's up? This is Peng from LabVIEW by Example, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, this video is a follow-up to my last video where I introduce you to the LabVIEW event structure. Um, so if you haven't seen that one yet, pause this one and check that one out. So today, I'm going to answer this question. Why, in every other tutorial or example you've seen, event structures are usually inside while loops? Hmm. But before we dive into LabVIEW, let's take a look at how Visual Studio processes user interface events. So let me bring up Visual Studio. Like so, and if I lay down a button here, and I create an event method that fires when I click. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's open up a message box. Uh, button clicked. Run that. So as you can see, if I hit that, I can click as many times as I want and doesn't close until I hit the X button on the right upper corner. All right, so looking at the code, um, doesn't look like much. Uh, so where is all the code that kept the window open and kept checking whether I clicked that button? Um, it's all behind the scenes. So that's the beauty of um, a lot of high level programming languages nowadays. A lot of the code is uh, generated and the heavy lifting is done for you. So if you really wanted to dig deeper, you can uh, try to go through the um, auto-generated code and you'll see in uh, program.cs, for example, there is a run function. So if I go to that definition and then look at the prototype and look at the comments, it's gonna talk about a main message loop um, that's running. Um, in the current thread. Okay, so keep that in mind uh, as we go through LabVIEW. Speaking of, let's get open up LabVIEW and let's create a new VI. And let me rearrange the VI so it's nice and organized. Okay, so let's try to recreate what I did in uh, the Visual Studio uh, within an event structure. So let me put down a button, like so. And let's change the text. Okay. All right, uh, so I'll go ahead and create an event loop or event structure, okay? And right click to add the event for uh, the button. Uh, so what I want to add is the button value change event. So this is the event that's gonna fire every time the button value changes. Um, so in other words, whenever uh, the button is pressed, this Boolean terminal is going to go from false to true. Uh, and that's when these this event is going to fire. So let's go ahead and hit OK. OK. And just let's just show a message whenever that value change happens. And let's run. So it's running. You see here, I click, button clicked. Okay, and it stops. All right, so the, the VI stops immediately. So what's what's going on here? So as you probably learned in my last video, there's an invisible loop that uh, go, is around this event loop structure and waits for events to occur. But after that event fires, um, that loop isn't started again 
Uh, since there no, there's no more code to run after this, uh, the program or the VI uh, basically ends. So what we really need is another outer loop uh, that calls this event structure again and again after uh, it finishes this event structure. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and put a while loop around this here. So with all while loops, you'll need a way to stop, stop it. So um, let's stop this whenever someone hits the X button um, in the upper right hand corner, like we did in the Visual Studio example. So let's go ahead and create a added event. And so that is under um, this VI panel close. Okay. So whenever this occurs, I want to wire a true Boolean out to that stop terminal, okay? So if you notice when I did that, the tunnel is shaded green and then there's a, a white dot inside there. So that means that even though there's nothing wired in the other cases, um, LabVIEW is going to assume that you want to pass out the default value for a Boolean, which is false. Okay. So it's going to continue running this loop uh, for any, uh, any, uh, any of the other cases. So you can tell with that, um, the way that that tunnel looks, or you can right click on it and it says use default. If it unwired is checked. All right. So let me go ahead and save this. Overwrite it, overwrite it. Okay, and let me run. Okay, so now I can click, button click, button click, button click, button click, and I can close it. All right. So, I, so what happened there? Um, the VI closed. Um, so. Um, the VI stopped ex execution because the while loop ended, but but that VI closed too, which is kind of annoying. Um, so we could have, we should have expected that since hitting that X in the development environment does close out a VI. Um, so so I mean that's that's the normal behavior. So if I create a new VI, VI and I close it using this X, it will just close. Okay. So. Uh, that's not kind of what I want to do when I'm developing. I don't want to keep reopening the VI. Um, so there's a way uh, to prevent that. So uh, let's go ahead and open that, up that VI again. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the block diagram and go to that case, the panel close case. Uh, I can right click it so you can edit the current case by saying right click and edit events handled by this case, and it'll take you straight to that event uh, case. So um, what I want to choose is instead of panel close, I want to choose the one with the panel close question mark. Okay. So what this event uh, represents, the one with the question mark, is that um, this event fires when the user hits the X button, but before doing anything else. So before closing the front panel window. So let me select that when I hit OK. Now, um, on the right side of this case, you can see that uh, there's a discard node. Okay. So what what uh, you can do is you can pass a Boolean value to this. So I want to set this to true. And what that's telling LabVIEW is whatever you were planning on doing after somebody hits the X, don't do that anymore. So I'm telling it not to close the VI. Okay. Let me save this and let me run. Okay. So it's running. I'm clicking away. Okay. And then close and the VI stays open. Good. All right. So one last nagging thing. So if you notice when I ran the VI, the button seemed like it was stuck when I pressed it. Um, let me run that again. So you can see there it's, it's pressed down with the uh, highlight there. Okay. So it, that doesn't seem right. Okay. 
Um, so what's up with that? Um, so let me uh, stop this. So as you can see in the block diagram, the buttons terminal is out here in empty space. So what happens when I hit run is that LabVIEW reads that button only once. Okay, so it's going to read this guy and then it's going to jump into this while loop. So the while loop does catch the button press event, but since the button terminal value is in red here, it doesn't automatically reset the state of the button. Okay, so 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 how do we get LabVIEW to do to do that? Okay, so the best way is to pull this terminal into the uh, case here, so that whenever this event um, event case runs, LabVIEW is going to read this terminal value, even though we're not doing anything with it. Um, the the program the the application is is running it, which causes this guy to uh, pop back up. Okay, uh, let me save and let me run again. Okay, so now if see when I click, this guy is not stuck anymore. Okay. Um, so there's plenty more on how um, buns work in LabVIEW, and that's going to be a topic on its own in, in another video. Um, probably call it like call it something like fun with button mechanical actions or something like that. But I think that's a good place to stop for now. Um, yeah, congrats. Uh, now you know how to create a simple user interface with an event structure inside a while loop and you kind of know now what what's what what the reasoning behind um, this this way of programming is. Um, give yourself a high five. <laughs> so uh, please do me a favor and add like add your likes and comments below or better yet subscribe to this channel. And if you need more LabVIEW how-to articles, head on over to labviewbyexample.com. And remember, you too can be LabVIEW awesome. Thanks for watching. Until next time.